we've been getting questions on how to lay out the lettering or striping or what have you on a wing. So what I want to go over is the process that I'm doing on this uh, Waco wing. And this is the traditional lettering from the 1930s. That's why it's so big. But what I'm going to do is take you through the different steps that I've got, how I set this up, and then how we progress through the process of putting letters or stripes, whatever you have on your wing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different phases that I've got done so far. First step on any lettering project or any striping project is to go ahead and lay out the actual shape of what you're going to be painting. In this case, the end of the end number, I've gone ahead and done in regular blue painter's tape. That covers the actual area that's going to be painted. Okay, once you have the shape all done, then the next step is to go ahead and outline about three eighths of an inch away from your actual painted area. Outline it with the yellow. I use the automotive paint tape that is available from any auto supply store. It's good tape. It doesn't leave any residue. It comes off the paint really well. And you can see what I've done is I've brought that tape within about three eighths of an inch. The reason for that is that is where I'm going to actually attach my paper covering the silver. And then the gap between the blue and the yellow tape will be overlaid with the fine line tape that will actually establish the exact edge that I'm going to be painting. Let's take a look at this up close. Okay, so you can see this up close and you can see the distance away I'm, I'm going. I'm maintaining a distance that will allow me to put the fine line tape right in this area here to cover between the blue and the yellow right over in this area. So that whole area, all this open area of silver, that will be covered with the fine line tape. So this is done on the entire letter that I'm doing. And you can see when I laid this wing out, I laid it out in such a way that I'm avoiding the inspection ring. I'm putting that in the center of the C. Here you can see I've gone ahead and I've added the fine line tape between the blue tape and the yellow tape. The fine line goes right to the edge of the blue, but overlaps the edge of the yellow tape. The reason for that is the yellow tape is where I'm going to be attaching my paint paper to cover all the silver. And I want the, the blue will eventually be removed, exposing just the silver area that I'm going to be painting. Let's take a look at this up, up close to see a couple of details that are really important. Here you can see how the tape is applied. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've applied this right tight to the edge of the blue, but it's overlapping the yellow. So from here out will be the painter's tape and paper that I'll be putting on there. Notice something that I've done here. On each of these blue fine line, I've gone ahead and added a tab. And this tab is really important. It's set up in such a way that I can grab this with a needle nose pliers or with a tweezers, and I can peel that off while the paint is wet before I have to peel off any of the paper. So that's something really important to do. Put a tab, and you can see I got a tab on that corner. I got a tab on this corner, and everywhere. And I kind of plan the direction that I'm going to be pulling the tape off. So I'm pulling that off when it's wet. Okay, let's take a look at this. The next step. After the fine line tape is all finished, next thing we have to do is go ahead and remove all the blue tape on the inside, and that's what I've done on this. Let's take a look at this up close. Here's a close-up look of the fine line tape with the blue tape removed. So I will be painting between the areas of the purple fine line from here up to here. All this area will be scotch brighted and prepped for paint. But first, I want to make sure that all my fine line tape is really nice and tight down. I've got my little tabs on here everywhere planned on how I'm going to be peeling that off which is really important. Like I said, you'll peel that off with either a tweezers or needle nose pliers. And I've got this on the entire letter. So from this point, the next thing I have to do is go ahead and tape the entire wing. Let's take a quick look at the wing at this point. I have all the letters fully taped. The fine line tape is in place on everything. And of course, the next step will be to go ahead and put the paper on the wing to cover everything that's not going to be painted. We're all done with all the taping and we are ready to paint now. You can see the entire wing is covered with paper. 
and all the letters have been properly scotch brighted and sanded so they're all scuffed and ready to go with the paint. Okay. When you do tape up a wing, make sure you cover every bit of it with paper so there's no overspray that gets on it, including the back side of the wing. And here's the back side. Again, everything taped already. Don't use newspaper, don't use any kind of printed paper. It can transfer images onto your surface of paint, which you don't want. Make sure you buy some decent paper from an automotive paint supply store. And in my case, I have a dispenser which dispenses the tape right under the paper, which really makes things easy. Okay, next step will be the painting. Okay, first fog coat is on. Take a look all the way across here. Sorry about the fan noise on. And we'll take a look at these a little closer. You can see how much is required for a fog coat. I like my fog coats to be very light, just very, very light coverage. Very little avoids the buildup that would cause orange peel later. This will fog, this fog coat will tack up very quickly. Probably be ready to shoot again in about five to 10 minutes. Very quick. All right, here we are with the third fog coat. You can see I'm at good color saturation. Over here, we have the plate that goes on that creates the bottom of the number three. So that will go on also. So at this point, I'm gonna let this tack up really well. Good 45 minutes till I have no transfer. Then I'll come out and I'll shoot my final step on here, which is my wet coat. Then I'll peel off the fine line tape immediately while it's wet. And we're done. Final coat, wet coat is on. Gloss looks great. Plenty of coat. No runs, no drips, no sags. Everything's nice and wet. Go ahead and clean out my gun and then I'll pull off the tapes. I prefer to pull the tape off in shorter segments. In the first letter, it all came off as one. These little tabs help, and I'm able to see the tabs better on some of these letters. So if you can, pull them off in little segments like that. It's a little bit neater. Got a little bleed through there. That'll come off nicely with a Q-tip. This is why we pull the tape off now. Any bleed through that I get will be very easy to take off while it's good and wet. Okay, the tape is all removed. There are some corners I have to go ahead and clean up. That's an example of something I need to go ahead and clean up and then I'll clean up with a Q-tip with a little bit of alcohol on it. All those little corners, I can tighten those up really well. So that's my next task. Okay, we've got it all cleaned up now. And you can see the corners are nice and sharp on that end. I clean those up and I just take a Q-tip and I cut the stem of it so the stem is sharp and I trim up the soft end and I just clean up those little corners. And I'm able to get those really well. About six hours, I will pull the rest of the tape and paper off. That way, if there's anything that has bled through, I can still clean that up with a little bit of lacquer thinner. 
If I wait 12 hours, it'll be permanent into the silver. So a little bit more time and I'll pull that off all off this evening. Here we are about six hours later. And what I've done is I've pulled off the majority of the green paper. And what I'm doing now is I'm removing the last of the yellow. The reason I'm doing it for six hours is any shadows that I find, I can still remove with alcohol. If you wait 12 hours, it'll be permanent in the base coat. In this case, the black will stay on the silver. So let me show you an area that I have a little tiny bit of a shadow and you'll see how easy it is to remove. Okay, this is a little tough to see, but you can see a small line of black along that end. I'm gonna go ahead and take some alcohol on a clean paper towel and remove that. Very lightly. Rub that with alcohol. Okay, that line's gone, and that little fog area will rub out just fine with some polishing compound when it's all set up after four or five days. Now I'll check the rest of it, see if there's any other shadowy areas like that. And there you have it, complete set of N numbers, NC13054. I'm real pleased with the way it came out. That lower corner of the three has an access panel, which is painted to finish out the three and the background silver. Everything came out really good. I did have a few bits of shadow, black shadow that had to be wiped off with alcohol. Came out really good. This process would be the same whether you're doing end numbers or stripes. They're both done exactly the same. Hope this video helps with laying out and doing end numbers. It's a big process. This job took me about 30 hours to complete.